The end of the suffering, the pain, and the tragedy of war. Those were the words of Colombian President Juan Manuel Santos as he signed a deal with the FARC fighters to put an end to one of the world's longest ongoing civil wars. A week later, however, a narrow majority of Colombians voted no to the peace agreement backed by everyone from the Pope to Barack Obama and triggered a political crisis that could bring down the country's government. So, after 52 years of war, a quarter of a million dead and millions displaced, Will Colombians ever see an end to the violence? To discuss this, I'm joined from Paris by Ingrid Betancourt, a former candidate for Colombian president who was captured by the FARC in 2002 on the campaign trail and was held hostage for over six years. Ingrid Betancourt, thank you for joining me on Upfront. You supported the peace deal that President Santos signed with the FARC. What was your reaction to the shock referendum result last Sunday, which saw your fellow Colombians reject that deal by a margin of just 0.5%? Well, I try to um, to contain my disappointment because, of course, what we see here is uh, a backlash of of you know the, the political confrontation, uh, the fact that so many Colombians are still uh, thinking that the war is the only way to uh, solve the problem in Colombia, and more than that, the fact that there are uh, group of Colombians that have uh, done their wealth and that have uh, gained their political power uh, by the war, for the war, and uh, they're not um, happy of letting this power and this wealth uh, just go. The leaders of the Victorious No campaign said the proposed peace agreement was too lenient uh, towards the FARC. It gave them impunity, some said. You were held by the FARC for six years. In your book, you describe being beaten, uh, even sexually assaulted by members of the FARC. Why did you back the peace deal? Because I think there's no impunity with the peace agreement. There's impunity right now with what we have. This uh, peace agreement states for a tribunal that will uh, have to see every case of these leaders and judge them and uh, sentence them. There's no perfect agreement. They won't have impunity. That's something that it's very clear. They will have to pay for the crimes they committed. The difference is between those that say it's not enough what they will pay and the ones who, like me, are saying uh, it's just enough and it's a good price to pay for having the country free of war. Uh, you say free of war. There's been a ceasefire in place since August of this year. On Tuesday, President Santos announced that it would hold until October 31st. The FARC leader, Timoshenko, responded on Twitter asking, then what? Do you think Colombia is about to head back into a new round of very severe fighting? We're going to be running against time, that's for sure. And we also have to bear in mind that there are people wanting to renegotiate this agreement in order to put some conditions so unacceptable to the other party, the FARC in this case, so that the FARC has the only uh, option to withdraw to the jungle and fight again. So it, it's a moment where we need to be wise, we need to be generous, but we need also to be shrewd in the sense that we need to know that we have little time to achieve a good agreement that will have the majority of Colombians feeling that this is acceptable. And this is what we need Santos to achieve in the next uh, weeks. What do you think about the discrepancy between those who seem to live geographically far away from the main areas of fighting in Colombia voting no, whereas someone like yourself, who actually suffered personally at the hands of FARC, voting yes? And when you see the, the, the map uh, of the regions who voted yes, you see that those are the regions that really are suffering from the war. So what it says and it tells us is that for people that haven't been affected by the war, the issue of the referendum was abstract. For us, the ones who have suffered, we know that the end of the war is a matter of happiness or unhappiness, of life and death, of future for our children or no future for our children. 
and former President Alvaro Uribe helped lead the No campaign against this peace deal. When he was the president of Colombia in 2008, he personally approved the rescue operation that ended your own captivity. Um, now he's obviously leading this uh, opposition to any peace deal on these terms. What is your message to Alvaro Uribe uh, today, a week on from the referendum? I would tell him to be generous for Colombia, to stop thinking about his own space in history and to think about what will happen to our children. Uh, you were obviously one of the most high-profile victims of the FARC. Uh, you suffered greatly uh, being held captive for more than six years. Have you personally forgiven uh, the people who did that to you? What is your view of the people who did that to you today, all these years later? It's difficult to, to, to say that I have uh, forgiven, um, because even if I have the will, and I know rationally that that's the way to go, uh, I've been you know, working on, on forgiveness for eight years now, since I was liberated. Um, but it is true that when uh, I'm facing uh, the pictures or photographs of people that, I, uh, that were my uh, my captors when I was in the jungle or when I see the camps of uh, the guerrilla or that I see images that bring me back, I have strong feelings that go uh, in reverse with, with my, my conviction. So uh, I understand that it's difficult to forgive. Uh, I, I don't think that we should vote yes to the referendum because we have forgiven. I think that we should, should vote yes to the referendum and accept the peace deal because we want a Colombia free of war. And it's, the, the nuance is there. And I don't think anyone can imagine uh, or even begin to imagine what you went through uh, in captivity. Uh, just on that period in captivity, more than six years, um, some of your fellow hostages uh, criticized you after they were all released, calling you selfish and arrogant, accusing you of making life difficult for them. Others disagreed, saying you were very courageous in captivity. What happened in that period that led to such a divide between uh, this group of 15 hostages who were eventually rescued from the FARC? I think it happened what happens always between humans. There are people that like you and there are people that don't like you. I think that we always have to plug ourselves with the light in us, but I also understand that for some it's very hard to do. I don't have any um, resentment to, to, to any of, of my fellow uh, hostages, and I hope we will all get over those, those feelings. Ingrid Betancourt, thanks for joining me on Upfront. That's our show. Upfront will be back next week.